pick one sentence for people to read and one sentence for people to hear throughout this whole podcast, it would be that. When it comes to fasting, longer fasts within the 24-hour range seem to enhance autophagy, which again is the process of clearing away old or damaged cells. This may help reduce one's risk of developing a number of chronic illnesses and supporting longevity. When, when I saw that, I was like, okay, check, please. I'm done. When it comes to health and longevity, you all know that I am the biggest advocate for doing what actually works, not just going with the newest fads, not just adding in a ton of supplements, and not just doing what we think is popular at the moment. I want to do what actually works. I want to work on longevity. I want to build myself from the inside out. And if you're listening to the Hotter Than Health podcast right now, you are in the same boat. You're willing to do the work. You're willing to put in the effort, the energy to understand what is going on inside our bodies and how can we up level? How can we enhance, reinvigorate, revitalize, (laughs) revitalize, and simply have better, clearer, stronger energy throughout the day? If that's what you're interested in, this is the episode for you. After a six-week break from the Hotter Than Health podcast, we are doing just that. We needed to take a moment of rest because that is what actually worked and found the exact right time to jump back into the podcast pool. This is the longest break we've taken since 2017. It was needed. It was necessary. And I've come back not just with a vengeance for all things podcasting in a great way, but with a true desire to ensure you're getting not only the facts, but the testimony and understanding this is a podcast where you can go to deep dive, but in a way that you can, it's not so, so detail data oriented that it's not digestible. We want to be able to have conversation style episodes where we're understanding application of certain, for example, today we're going to be talking about fasting. Uh, We want to talk about hormone health. We want to talk about if you're trying to conceive. We want to talk about protein and how it affects the body. Fat loss, fat burning, different types of cardiovascular training. We're getting really into it, and over the next year or so, you are going to see the amplification of research data and clarity within the episodes. You're also going to hear stories and application and how you can make this a even more applicable resource for your day-to-day life. Without further ado, welcome back to the Hotter Than Health podcast. Hopefully you are reinvigorated just as much as I am to get back into it. Excuse the allergies and the nasal passages. That's just the way, that's what we're working with today. And if we waited until everything was absolutely perfect to execute, then nothing would ever get done. Am I right? Let's get into today's topic. When I mentioned in the beginning of this episode, we want on this podcast to talk about not just what is popular, not just what is cool, trendy, hip, and going with influencers, but what actually works. And when I say what actually works might not be the easiest thing. Some of these tips, tools, tactics may not be the easiest to implement on a day-to-day basis. This one specifically not on a daily basis, but on a weekly or even monthly basis. However, What we want to do is arm you with some knowledge, some practical data, and some practical tips that will help you if you do decide to go this route. What we're talking about today is a prolonged 24-hour fast. And a 24-hour fast is maybe seems crazy to some people. To some of you listening, it might seem like, yeah, okay, I I fast a little bit. I could probably do that. Some of you may turn away really quickly because for whatever reason, it's just not, it's not in your process right now. It doesn't seem applicable to your lifestyle for health reasons, for mental health reasons, for whatever reasons. But if you are going to be someone who 
dabbles in this, why not have the research? I'm going to be referencing a lot of topics and studies from different MDs and a few articles that were posted in 2023, March of 2023, so just over a year old, and I wanted to use fairly new data when going through this podcast. And by the way, if you're interested in what's been going on the past six weeks, next week's episode, we're going to do a mini recap of what's been going on, what's coming up, and just a a check-in. So (laughs) if you're interested in that, it's coming. But I wanted to give you guys some nitty-gritty good health stuff that I've just been interested in. When it comes to a 24-hour fast, essentially a 24-hour fasting method, it, it involves abstaining from calorie intake for a 24-hour period. And some people might say, and I have said this in the past as well, so I'm, I'm guilty of this as well, but in certain fasts, fasting protocols, the goal is to not spike your blood sugar, meaning you could put f- some ghee in your coffee in the morning, or you could use stevia, or you could use different sources of calories that wouldn't spike your blood sugar level. Uh, However, we are going to be talking for all intents and purposes today about a no calorie fast. I mean, there might be, uh, I can't imagine what we're going to be talking about that would really include a bunch of calories, but that's the context of what we'll be chatting about today. And some of the main, some of the main benefits of a 24-hour fast, and, and we'll go into the difference between different fasting periods and the 24-hour fast, but it, f- from a baseline level, some of the benefits that have been found, researched, and studied for hundreds of years, I mean, hundreds of years, people, oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. One of the main benefits is that, yes, it can support weight loss and fat loss. There are going to be caveats to any of these benefits. Let's, let's put that up front. It can support weight loss. It can support fat loss. If it goes too far, it can also be damaging metabolically. But if done in the right way, it can be really beneficial metabolically. It can help improve blood lipid levels. And when we're talking about blood lipid levels, I will be posting, because again, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not a cardiovascular professional here. I'm not an MD but I am going to be posting what I've researched in the show notes. But it can help improve blood lipid levels. It can help support metabolic health. It can support cellular health and longevity, which I'm very interested in, such as helping to lower one's risk of certain chronic illnesses, cancers, and overall supporting longevity. It can also improve our heart health. When we look at the number one killers in chronic illnesses in the U.S. year over year over year over year. Number one is heart. Number one is cardiovascular issues. There's cardiovascular issues and then there's other chronic illnesses such as cancers. And when it comes to the controllables, when we look at the resources around us, Instead of first looking at pills, which again, modern medicine is incredible, God's gift. I I definitely am not against all modern medicine. When it is used as the only source of fixing something and it's used to prevent symptoms, that is where I am turned off. These are going to be not only preventative measures, but overall longevity supporting measures in in keeping yourself as healthy as possible. So we're going to be touching on those different things today. Fat and weight loss. We're going to be talking about metabolic health, insulin resistance. I don't know if I mentioned that. Insulin stores, heart health, and overall cellular health and longevity. If you're interested in following along with some of this research, it is in the show notes. Let's let's chat about the 24-hour fast in comparison to maybe what we've seen in the past with a 16-hour fast or an 18-hour fast. When it comes to a a 
fasting period or a uh, calorie restrictive time. What am I trying to say? (laughs) Uh, Time restricted eating is the word I'm looking for. When we're looking at comparing a 16-8 protocol, meaning or an 18-6 protocol, meaning you're not eating for 18 hours and then you have a six hour eating window, yeah, that can likely be more that can likely be more sustainable. Let's say you're super busy, you're a parent, but you're also trying to ensure that you don't lose too much weight or you want to, maybe it's just not in your lifestyle. It, whatever the reasons may be, it might be more maintainable. It also might be a good introduction to fasting if you've never fasted before. It might be something where you are able to test your limits, understand, okay, this is what it feels like when I get super hungry, but this is what it feels like to have the clarity that you have and the the better sleep that you have when you are fasting. It, It shows you the benefits and it shows you almost your threshold. But when you are fasting properly without spiking your blood sugar levels, there is less of that hangry feeling. And there might be some lethargy, but there's also these moments of real, real bursts of clarity. We'll get into that. And then the 24-hour fast is simply that. Say you eat at 5 p.m. on a Sunday, and then you break your fast at 5 p.m. on a Monday. In the past, this is I've done 40, uh, several 48-hour water fasts with co- just coffee, herbal tea, and water and a little bit of pink salt at some points for minerals. And then I've done several more 24-hour fasts. The 24-hour fast is something I actually did two weeks ago. And it was simply because I knew that things were going to be really busy coming up with work. I knew that I was feeling really good. It was, it's spring. It's gorgeous weather here in Charlotte, North Carolina. And overall, I wanted to do something to clear the slate. It, it's this spring awakening where we're all feeling this. It's like spring cleaning for your insides. So I decided to do another 24-hour fast with just water. I did a cup of black coffee in the morning and that was it. And I was, by the way, drinking tons of water throughout the day with a little bit of pink salt and do what you want with the pink salt. I do it for some electrolytes and minerals and simply to put a little bit of texture flavor to the water not a 10 just a little and I found that this was really really doable for me the reason why I decided that the 24-hour fast was going to be really doable for me is one I I put (laughs) really put my mind to it the night before here here's my we're going to talk about the whole protocol then we're going to get into the benefits what I did was had dinner around I believe it was something like 5 or 6 p.m. on a Sunday night And I did high quality lean protein. I think I did an organic ground beef, grass fed, grass finished, Uh, a ton of greens topped with arugula, a Japanese sweet potato and a little bit of avocado. So there was fiber, carbohydrates, tons of greens, healthy fats and really high quality protein, meaning I was getting lots of good, dense, nutritious calories. And I was also getting a lot of what am I trying to say? Oh, (laughs) lots of fiber and lots of things that are going to help stabilize my blood sugar. So if I had ended that night with just burger and fries or something that was less satiating for me internally, or I was super dehydrated, whatever the case may be, I could have expected more blood sugar spikes in the morning, meaning I would, my stomach would wake up really hungry, but my body really didn't need the food quite yet. Starting the 24-hour fast with your final meal before the 24-hour fast, being super balanced, nutrition-dense, highly recommend doing that. Then throughout the day, I ensured that I had I had my calendar planned out. I, w- I, didn't, I, I ensured that that was a really productive day for me because I thought, okay, if I'm going to use this time, I don't want to have so much free time that I'm you know, scrolling Instagram, looking at a bunch of food, trying to distract myself. Because the point of doing this is for the mental clarity. And if we're just using social media the whole time to distract ourselves, uh, 
that our mind goes elsewhere. Like I wanted this cleanse to be internal for the mind and the body. So I ensured that I had work, (laughs) work that day. And I did a mini Pilates workout. I've been doing the Mills Method workout. Uh, Amelia Coggins, she's been on the podcast before. We're going to try and get her on again. Amelia, message me back. (laughs) And I did, I think it was a 30 minute, super low intensity because I didn't want to be sweating or burning a bunch of calories. And then I went to work. I went into the office for until maybe 2 or 3 p.m. and had water with me. I had my tasks laid out for the day. I ran a couple of errands. And then when it came dinner time, I didn't, I had everything ready for dinner the night before because I knew (laughs) that by the like hour 22 or so of a 24 hour fast, I was going to be so ready for food that if I went into a grocery store, I was just going to, excuse me, burst at the seams and get everything in sight. So I, essentially duplicated the meal that I had the night before and I'm going to say that was somewhere like six seven hundred calories it's a pretty dense meal did that had some dark chocolate afterwards and I slept like a baby I slept like a baby it's not like I was chugging coffee all day long it's not like I was on my phone all day long it was actually a really beneficial it was beneficial for me I, it makes you realize how much time we are spending thinking about food throughout the day. I would be standing up on the phone on a phone call in the office pacing around and I would go stand in the kitchen. And then I'd be like, oh wow, normally I would go and grab a handful of X or a handful of Y or I would grab this kind of drink or put this in my coffee and just mindlessly eat. And I also realized how much more time I had to get ready, how much more time I had to like organize my apartment before I left for the day. Because I wasn't cleaning up a bunch of food dishes. I wasn't... Also, I've said this a hundred times before. I am still... Like, I don't have kids. I'm not beholden to a really ridiculous work schedule. I'm, I'm very fortunate to have some flexibility where I know I can do these things. But it makes me... <laughs> It makes me even more confident saying that if you are incredibly busy and you need to have an incredibly productive day, that would be a good time for an intermittent fast. Here's what I will tell you. Once you get through the first few hours, you're like, okay, I I can definitely do this because around the, uh, for me, it was about 12 hours to 14, 15 hours in. There is this beautiful clarity burst that happens. You are, you feel, you don't feel hungry. You feel like you have tons of energy. You feel bright. You feel clear. You feel as though things are lining up. There is just this weird pocket of time. And I, I believe that that's when our body is really effectively using fat as fuel. And we're in a, a state of ketosis. And you might notice your your breath starts to become uh, not bad but um what is the word i'm looking at it almost sharp <laughs> sounds uh, uh, you'll know it if you try it or if you've been in ketosis and you've tested your ketones levels for whatever reason but essentially what happens is it's this time when your body is using clean resources clean fuel which is fat to ha- to burn energy if you just eat a really sugary breakfast then you'll burn that f- you'll be using that sugar and those carbohydrates to give you energy throughout the day and then you crash but if you tap into those deep internal fat stores that is where that clean fuel comes from and it's <laughs> it, it feels really really good i will say like i said at the end i was ready to eat i was definitely ready to eat but it was it was so doable it was absolutely doable and I ensured that the both meals before and after the 24-hour fast were high-quality, nutrient-dense, but yeah, I had some chocolate, like, this so sue me. That is the protocol for the 24-hour fast that I just did, and I believe that a lot of people listening would be interested in something like that. So if you are interested in doing something like that, let me know. Also, do it at your own pace. Like, if you feel like, if you need to talk to a doctor about it first, go for it. If you need to talk to professionals about it, go for it. I also am a you all know that this is a podcast that's all about preventative and it's all about 
going the holistic route if you can before going into we're, we're not going into that today but let's talk about some of the benefits when we talk about the benefits of a 24-hour fast as it pertains to weight loss here's where we're going to start referencing a little bit of the data uh, and in a 2015 review led by <coughs> excuse me led by, and I'm going to be referencing a Dr. Tinsley, that included seven whole-day fasting studies found that people who followed a low-calorie diet and engaged in 24-hour fasts up to two times per week for 12 to 24 weeks experienced reduction in body weight up to 9% compared to control groups. This may not sound like a lot, and this may sound like a 12 12 to 24 weeks, that's a really long period of time, 24 hour fast, two times a week. Yeah, that might not be doable. I, I'm talking, I'm doing this once a month for overall longevity benefits. However, uh, here's, here's another quote that's pulled. Uh, a longer fast may be more effective at switching the body into a fat burning state, which will boost weight loss, says board certified OBGYN and functional medicine specialist Kyron Dunstan, MD. She's going to be in the show notes as well. There's not as much data on if a specific 24 hour fast is better than maybe a 19 hour fast or some other ambiguous number that's close to it. It's more speaking about is our body able to have time in a, in a state where it's burning through fat and using its fuel without being burdened. And I'm not saying calories are a burden, but without being having work to do processing food because our body goes through so much in its mechanical digestion that naturally burns calories. That's what we'll say about weight loss and and a lot of I've I've talked to men about this a lot <clears throat> that when they hear fasting they immediately think oh it's going to burn my muscle. Oh it's just going to take away my muscle. However, I've heard women say this as well but for all intents and purposes, I have heard more men say this, especially because for, for it's hard to gain muscle. And when you have it, you want to hold on to it like a commodity. And that requires supporting through, through high quality calories and protein. Now, when it comes to weight loss, I mean muscle loss, we know that if you are maintaining blood sugar levels, you're staying pretty, you're, you're not spiking your blood sugar levels throughout the day. You're not going out and doing these crazy workouts and tons of cardio while you're on these fasts. The benefits metabolically, and this leads me into the next point, the benefits metabolically will actually outweigh any type of muscle loss. There's Unless you are 3% body fat and you got nothing to run through and you're about to train for, if you're going into a bikini competition, you likely won't have as much body fat to, or you, you're going to have enough body fat to work with before it taps into muscle. Doing this on a one month or once a week basis is more beneficial than it is not, especially for muscle maintenance, because you're tapping into fat you're not tapping into muscle, you are giving your body the actual chance that it needs to begin recovering and repairing. You have that meal post-workout, your body is using the protein and the carbohydrates to fill in to repair. And then you're giving yourself uh, a moment, (laughs) 24 hours in fact, to repair. That leads me into how it supports metabolic health. Metabolic syndrome, I'm quoting this, metabolic syndrome is a term for a cluster of symptoms including elevated blood sugar levels and blood sugar, blood pressure levels that increase your risk of health conditions like heart disease. A 2021 study that included 103 people who had at least one of these, which means elevated blood sugar levels, elevated blood pressure levels, 
who had at least one of these for metabolic syndrome, found that those who performed water-only fasts twice a week weekly for four weeks and then only once a week for 22 weeks experienced significant reductions in their metabolic syndrome score. Specifically, they had mild to moderate improvements in diastolic blood pressure, the heart-protective HDL cholesterol, blood sugar, and triglycerides. Oh, people in the, in the control group who followed their normal diets experienced an increase in their metabolic syndrome score. All of this to say that if you are or if you know someone who is struggling with high blood sugar, high blood pressure, then there have been studies done specifically recently <laughs> and for longer periods of time that have shown that markers that lead to, that can lead to an increased risk for health health conditions, which we know is the number one killer in the United States year over year, we know that these 24-hour fasts can reduce and show significant reduction in that, in, in blood pressure, in HDL cholesterol, and uh, blood sugar and triglycerides. And I say this for everybody, but and but especially men. I know that it seems in in my history, uh, in in people that I have known, there have been more more men that I have observed struggling with heart issues. But as as we get older and life happens and we start to see more and more tragedy amongst us, we see more women struggling with this as well as well. The, the reason why I'm so adamant about these potentially more challenging routes is to, because one, once we're on the medicine, once we're on the blood sugar, blood pressure medicine, once we're on these things, it becomes, it becomes a crutch and it becomes much more challenging to want to push your body to do things naturally. I, there have been times when I've been on medicines and I'm like, oh wow, it's fixing everything, but no, it's fixing a symptom it could come back. So when it comes to heart health and metabolic health, the 24 hour fast, there's so much research to show that. And and again, your doctor might say, oh, that's baloney. That's malarkey. Do your own research. We have to be our own advocates. And I'm not saying don't listen to your doctors. I am saying if, if there's something that you believe, then then go get multiple opinions. I'm not here to diagnose or tell people what to do, but there's stuff out there. There's research out there that can help us improve our lives drastically. And if that, even if you don't notice as much of a benefit, but you can influence others, that's what we want. This one's interesting, uh, how a 24-hour fast can improve insulin resistance. In a 2021 study, the participants randomized to the 24-hour fasting protocol experienced a 32 0.5% improvement in insulin resistance scores, while the control group experienced 3.7% improvement. So when you have a one group that follows a 24-hour fasting protocol, and they have just over a 32% improvement in their insulin resistance, and then there's a control group with no 24-hour fasting protocol, and they experienced a 3% improvement, you, the the proof is in the pudding. I'm not saying it f- cures everything and it's perfect. But if there was some reason, some way that I could reduce my, improve my insulin resistance, even as a, like a, a fairly young, healthy person, I would do it. And I do. I'm not going to go too far into the heart health because we did touch on it when it came to metabolic health. But here it says a 2018 study in 24 people found that only that the water only fasting for 24 hours helped reduce levels of TMAO, which is a compound that's created by gut bacteria from the breakdown of substances found in certain food like red meat, eggs, dairy, and having high levels of this TMAO may increase a risk of heart disease. But when it comes to the study in 2018 with 24 people that did a 24-hour protocol of fasting had reduced levels of TMAO by an average of 10.8 NG. I don't know what 
10.8 <laughs> ng means. But research suggested that more research be completed to understand how prolonged fasting methods may impact TMAO levels and heart disease risk. So again, I didn't want to go too far into this because I don't know what NG is. There are a couple things in here that I'm not familiar with. Like I am not here to completely go through all the data, but it is interesting to see that some of the <laughs> the overarching benefits are cellular and heart health. And this is this is where this is where it comes into play for me. When we're looking at a 24-hour fast and we think, "Oh my gosh, it's it's for fat loss, it's for weight loss, it's for it's a, it's in vain, it's all these things." Th- think about this. Before I get into my last point and and I what I believe is my big driver for this, people have been fasting for thousands of years they have been doing it for religious purposes for thousands of years spiritual purposes to maintain health to enhance overall well-being there are practices in so many religions there's so many uh even modern day christians who do 24 48 hour fasts with no water i mean full-on biblical into it so that they can improve their their prayer they get clarity and they seek uh they seek a depth in their relationship with their higher power. <clears throat> and what I find so interesting is that we question these incredibly ritualistic and ancient methods and methodologies that would never be questioned in other cultures like in Chinese medicine nobody's questioning this in biblical times nobody's questioning this there's stories in the bible that date back to fasting and and we seem to be so against something and when something is super hard we're going to find reasons not to do it we will find reasons not to do it but when it comes to fasting truly unless like I want you guys to do these things safely and I want you guys to do them with your own research and your own intuition and instinct, but also know that not everything that is good is also easy at the same time. And, okay, people give birth for 24 hours. People give birth for, for 72 hours and it's crazy. And I'm thinking, okay, all we're asking is to not do something, be more productive, get energy, and then probably sleep better that night consult your doctor. I'm not here to say anything other than the benefits of what could be. Okay. Now let's get into the cellular health and longevity. And this might not sound that cool. Like it's easier to talk about weight loss. It's easier to talk about fat loss and health uh, benefits for your heart. But when it comes to autophagy, which is the process of clearing away old or damaged cells, Okay, I want you guys to remember that word, autophagy. And you might have heard it if you listen to other podcasts like the Mind Body Green podcast, you listen to the Sean Stevenson Model Health podcast, you listen to the Andrew Huberman podcast, like lots of Joe Rogan podcasts. Autophagy is basically clearing away cell death. We don't want all these rogue cells in our bodies that's why people ben- that's why there are so many benefits from green tea because it gets rid of uh, miscellaneous cells that are not beneficial to us oxidized cells when we look at autophagy enhanced autophagy may help reduce one's risk of developing chronic illness and supporting longevity when i started this podcast in 2017 i felt called to ensure that my message was heard by at least one person. And if I could get to one person, that was mission accomplished. After my mom died from a incredibly rare type of cancer, and I think at some point I do want to have a conversation with some type of MD about thyroid cancer and different holistic practices. We'll get into that another time. But... For, for anyone listening, my mom was f- the, the fittest, mo- most seemingly healthy 
woman that you've ever met. She was a marathon runner. She was a hiker. She was strong. She was funny. She had moderate to low stress. She traveled. She took care of herself. She ate well uh, and didn't have a whole lot of like extra fat on her body. She was very lean. She just, either way. And she got one of the rarest, the, the rarest type of thyroid cancer and it took her. And I'm not saying this to feel pity. I'm not saying this to feel any other way other than it can, there, when it comes to chronic illnesses, (laughs) when it comes to chronic illnesses, nobody is immune. Everyone is susceptible to it. And if everyone is susceptible to it, why would we do, that's not to scare people and say everyone will get some type of chronic disease. But if there were things that we could do that we knew would give us another shield, some more time, some even more clarity towards how our body worked so that if there does come a time when something's wrong, we can observe it faster, wouldn't you do it? Now, it says, it does note, experts experts note that there's still a lot to learn about the effects of fasting on cellular aging. However, a fasting expert, his name is Jason Fung, MD, and I know that he has written lots of books. He has uh, been on CNN, New York Times, Forbes, uh, the Toronto Star. He's BMJ Business Journal, Business Medicine Journal. He's got tons of information and credibility. And he went into some of the, excuse me, let me get back to this. Uh, Fasting expert Jason Fung, MD, explained on the Mind Body Green podcast that longer fasts in the 24-hour range seem to enhance autophagy. Longer fasts within the 24-hour range seem to enhance autophagy, meaning getting rid of the old or damaged cells. This can help to reduce developing a number of chronic illnesses and supports longevity. If I could pick one if I could pick one sentence for people to read and one sentence for people to hear throughout this whole podcast, it would be that. When it comes to fasting, longer fasts within the 24-hour range seem to enhance autophagy, which again is the process of clearing away old or damaged cells. This may help reduce one's risk of developing a number of chronic illnesses and supporting longevity. When, when I saw that, I was like, okay, check please, I'm done. I had been doing these 24-hour fasts, but it just relit my, it, it, it re- gave me more life. And also, this is free. <laughs> you might actually save money by not going out to lunch. You may inspire others, and it's temporary. It is temporary, and it could provide so many long-lasting benefits. Overall, what are we here to say? Let me Let me also say that I know that some people who get a taste of some benefit from fasting or anything, like there's there's addiction in everything. There's ways to overdo anything. There's ways to underdo anything. If it's not safe or appropriate for you, like if you are pregnant or trying to get pregnant, if you have struggled with amenorrhea or low body weight or extreme thyroid disease because or, uh, issues, if you're breastfeeding, if you have a history of disordered eating, crazy low blood sugar levels, or hypoglycemia. There's lots of reasons why you should consult a doctor first, but I'm, I'm coming from someone who, what I would say, fairly neutral. Like, I'm not on prescription medicines, and I'm not on, I don't have um, any pre-existing conditions. If, it, if that is the case, then get one or two opinions. Do your own research. Uh, it's, it's not the fully right choice for everybody. That's why there are options do this in a safe way, but there are options. If you want to read this article, uh, it also comes with a ton of data. If they, if you're a data person, then absolutely check out the articles within this article, and they come from the National Library of Medicine, uh, National Center for Biotechnology Information. When I read these types of articles, I get so re-inspired, and also I just want to grab the world and shake them. If there are so many benefits to what can be done in a 24-hour period, why wouldn't we do it? 
It can help the w- it can help your sleep patterns. It can help hormones. It can help cell death and cell turnover. It can help your skin, your energy, fat loss. Uh, name it. I'm really excited for you all to read this. Next week we are gonna be. <laughs> I'll give you that little six week episode. Nothing crazy. Like uh, I have no new. Uh, like I'm not pregnant. There's nothing wahoo happening. But if you're going through a season and you feel like giving up, there's reasons why it's okay to take breaks as opposed to, like, there's it's okay to pump the brakes. And I tapped into this in the beginning of this episode. Hey, it doesn't have to be perfect for you to execute. And I was just talking to Jason about this the other day. Something doesn't have to be perfect in order to execute. But as long as you have that grain of sand, it can turn into a pearl. That is what I went, that's why I got reinvigorated to come back in here. It is Saturday, it is 86 degrees out here in Charlotte, not a cloud in the sky and perfect, and I'm inside recording two episodes because I just feel that there's no perfect time, and I missed it. Like I mentioned before, if you have not checked out the show notes, make sure you do so. You can also go and check out the Organifi products that I absolutely love. We have a trip coming up to Grand Caymans next week, and it's a scuba trip, which means we're up early, we're in wetsuits, we're random eating food throughout the day on the boat. There might be periods of time where we're not eating, and that's all good, but I do always make sure. Like, we have a little glass jar, we travel it with it, we give it to everyone in the family when we travel. And we chug our greens juice in the morning and it makes all the difference in the world, especially in springtime. We're feeling good. We're feeling re-energized. The cherry blossoms are out. This is the time to incorporate the greens juice into your daily routine. You can check out the greens juice. I like the green apple flavor. And I also purchase a couple of little glass jars on Amazon so that I can always have travel packs. And then I leave one at my boyfriend's house. I leave one at my house. I leave them all over the place because I do not like to be without it. And if you're someone who struggles with irregularity while you travel, hello, then you want to have your conference calls, have your greens juice. There are so many benefits. You fill in so many nutritional gaps at the beginning of the day. You can check it out for 20% off at Organifi.com backslash H-T-H. Again, that is Organifi.com backslash H-T-H. And I know you will absolutely love it. There are so many repeat customers. Put it on subscription. Do what works for you. But I hope that you check it out. And I will talk to you all next time.